Alrighty, so today we are starting a new unit on collecting data. Um, so this is going to be unit 10 for us. We do have a couple of objectives before we get started. So it's going to be given a data set displayed as a list of values or shown in a uh, dot plot, report the number of observations. Um, we have understand that in general, the more observations made, the more trustworthy the results of the study are. Uh, given a verbal description of a statistical study, explain how the data uh, were measured. And then given a verbal description of a statistical study, identify the units of measurement used in the data values. We do have a couple key terms that we're gonna look at before um, getting started. So we do have a dot plot, and so that's going to be a chart that uses stacked dots to represent counts. So we'll look a little bit more at that in a little bit. Um, and then we also do have a unit. So a unit is a standard amount of uh, a standard amount used in measurement. So an example of this um, would be inches, feet, pounds, gallons, stuff like that. <coughs> uh, before we get started, uh, the word data does that mean anything to you? What? When have you heard that word before? Doctor's office. Yep, doctors use a lot of data, especially with their research and stuff like that. So we'll get started on that study. Alrighty, so here is your um, study guide if you want to fill that out as we go along. Um, so the first question that you will be looking for is list three things a statistician or researcher should use to prepare for a study. We'll have put that here on this page. Um, so to prepare for a study, a statistician must decide on the number of observations, how to measure the data, and appropriate use of the units to use, okay? So that's going to be your number one. So we have decide on the number of observations, decide how to measure the data, and choose the appropriate units to So must decide. So the number of observations, how to measure the data, and then the appropriate units to use. So, um, we're going to just click through examples about the weights of a cereal box. So, we're going to go from image to image. So, a statistical study is a quality control inspector um, monitors a plant that makes breakfast cereal. Is the production line filling boxes of cereal the way it should? Does each box get the same amount of cereal? She performs a study. Okay, so we would think about this bud as um, if... I can get a bag of chips or a bag of cereal or something that comes off of a line, in this case it's cereal. You want every box to measure that same. So this is what this researcher is measuring, okay? So how many observations? So the quality control inspector measures the contents of 100 randomly selected boxes of cereal produced during a single shift. So of all the boxes, she randomly just selects 100 of those, okay? From there, how will the data be measured? She's going to measure it um, with a scale weight to um, measure how much those weigh. And then the next question, remember when we're going through that study, is what will the units be? And she has decided that the units is going to be in ounces, okay? So, we're gonna just kind of see how we're doing so far. Um, so this is another example. So Daniela is planning an experiment for a science fair. She's investigating the effort of fertilizer or the effect of fertilizer on the height of tomato plants. Okay, so of all these options, what should Daniela do before she begins her experiment? And so we're gonna select one. 
Does she need to decide to use a ruler to measure the plant? Does she need to find the average height of the plants? Does she need to select the number of plants to use in her study? Does she need to choose inches as a unit of measure? Or should she choose pounds as a unit of measure? Okay. So remember, so we need to decide on the number of observations. Okay. So first selection, number of observations. Which one of the votes has to do with the number of observations? Um, so that's the first question. C. Yes, C. So she's going to select the number of plants she's going to use. Good job. The next, we need to decide how, the me how to measure the data. So how are we going to measure it? Um, like what instrument? Like in the, the serial example, they used a scale. So what? how can we measure how big something is? Height? Yeah, how can you measure that height? Inches. Yes. So we are going to measure with in inches. How are you going to measure the inches? Like what kind of instrument are you going to use? Mm -hmm. A ruler. Yes, good job. Awesome. So let's check we did okay. And we did. Awesome. So we figured out um, the number of observations, how we're going to measure the data, and what units we were going to use, which was inches. Good job. So identifying the number of data observations. Okay, remember that is that first one. So in analyzing a statistical study, it is important to pay attention to the number of data values, how they were measured, and the units that were used. So each observation in a statistical study produces a value or data point, okay? Data from a study can be displayed in a list or on a dot plot or on a graph, okay? So a list. So for this example, it's going to be a pet control. So he's going to, Jamal asks several randomly chosen students how many pets they have at home, okay? There are three different ways Jamal can show his data. So he's going to ask people, so if someone in our class would ask, I have one, I have Dakota, right? So he, this is one way to say, it. he is making a list, okay? So he just randomly is asking, so someone has zero, someone has zero, someone has one, four, and so on, okay? So that's his class, and he just made a list of the numbers, okay? From there, you can make a dot plot, okay? So you can see that the number of points, each point equals one person, okay? So one, two, three, four, five kids have zero pets at home. Seven kids have one, and so that's one other way to display that, okay? That was one of our keywords. Another way to do it is a graph, okay? So a bar graph, we've seen these before in previous units. So instead of dots, you have your axis displaying one, two, three, four, five, and going that way. Any questions so far, bud? All right, awesome. So how is it measured? So statisticians, uh, statisticians can collect data from different, <coughs> I'm sorry from different sources and measure the data in different ways. A description of a study usually tells how the data were collected and measured, okay? So we have a little picture down here to help us. So a consumer group tests batteries to see if they, if they last as long as the company claims. To collect data, they produce a new bat, to pr they place new batteries in toy robots, turn them on, and let them run until the batteries die. To measure the length of time the batteries last, the group uses a clock to record the starting and ending times, okay? So like our first example was a ruler we used. Now they're using a clock to measure time, okay? So units of measure. So the data collected from a statistical study must show a unit of measure. And if we wanna go back and remember what a unit is, a unit is a standard amount used in a measurement. So that can be, this is where um, we always say don't forget your units. So like your inches, your feet, your pounds, gallons, whatever we're measuring in, okay? So to explore this image, so if we look at the first one, they did the snake lens, ew. So snakes, they measured them in inches, okay? I really hope you don't have to measure snakes in feet because then I'd be terrified. Okay, so time to peel an orange, seconds, Sometimes it might take a little over a minute, but seconds is probably gonna be more accurate. And then the ages of band members, okay, so age would be in years, okay. So increasing data observations increases confidence. 
So if everything else is equal, the more data that are gathered, the more confidence you can have in the results study, okay? So we would be a very small population size. So if they asked us to question about the pets, okay? That's not really giving a good feel for our classroom, okay? What they really want to do is the more people that you ask, the more confidence that you can have in that answer. So in general, the more data that are collected, the more trustworthy the results will be, okay? So if we look at these two, which one do you think, which study, the left or the right, is going to have more trustworthy results? Right. The right, and why do you say that? Because it has more data points. Yeah, it has more data. It has more dots and more people that they ask, okay? They have more students' ages are collected. So, all right, moving on. I'm gonna have you do your checkup quickly. Okay, so if you can open your computer to your checkup, I'm going to have you do that. Yep, so if you can answer a couple of questions. So you get that's going to be the total number of dots, right? There you go, awesome. Maybe correct yourself on that one. So, hey, thank you for doing those questions. It looks like you have a pretty good grasp on the concept so far. We do have just a short video just kind of to review and give us another example of how collecting data could be used. I really like this video because it kind of goes back to what we do every Wednesday in recycling because you know Ms. Curtis is a little crazy about saving the earth, okay? So it's going to just talk a little bit about that in a way that they collected data based on recycling. Now, nothing crazy. I'm not going to have us do this any time soon, but... It's just kind of fun to think about. Uh, that term means the conservation and the oh, environment. So <coughs> you can call me a tree hugger. No, 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 no. I, I don't actually go around hugging trees. Uh, that term means the conservation and the environment are a big deal to me. I mean, it really upsets me to see people throw paper away instead of recycling it. So. I've started a recycling program at the school where I work. Each class now has a paper recycling bin. You're welcome. To motivate the students to remember to recycle, I'm offering prizes for the class that recycles the most each month. It's a good idea, right? I'm interested in seeing how much paper is recycled each week to see who wins the monthly prize. I'll need to collect some data to do that. So. My first question is, how do I measure the amount of paper each class recycles? I could count each sheet of paper in the bin. That would take way too long. I could measure the height of the paper in the bin. That might encourage some students to crumple up the paper to make it take up more space. Or I could weigh the bins. Yeah, I think I'll do that. There's a shipping scale in the office I can it gives the weight in pounds or kilograms. I think I'll use pounds for my units. 
So I'm measuring the weight of the recycled paper and using units of pounds. All right, now to get my data. So here's what I collected at the end of the first week. So far I have nine observations, one from each class. But if I want to draw conclusions about the data I've collected, like the average amount of paper recycled, I'll need more observations. Hmm. It means I'll have to keep measuring the amount of paper that is recycled in each classroom for many more weeks. The more data I collect, the more I can trust the conclusions I make. So I'm going to keep collecting this paper and recording the number of pounds that each classroom recycles. Perhaps by the end of the year I can convince my school to let me start recycling plastics. Yes. Whoa! Hey, now that is a tree hugger. That's impressive dedication, sir. Good job. Who doesn't like you? So, um, besides the fact that it kind of we already are recycling plastic at school, right? I'm already encouraging that kind of stuff. So they had decided how they were going to measure it, so he decided to weigh it because, you know, pounding paper, stuff like that would have been a little bit extreme. Decided his unit, and then therefore, then he collected his data, so. Any questions so far? No. Alrighty, so I am going to hand out the practice. I'm going to have you complete this today, and then we'll move on to the quiz tomorrow, okay? Let me know if you have any questions.